I'm doing a few experiments today. Um, a number of people have got in touch because they've ordered a V3 um, in the States and they're going to be using it in parks. Now, I haven't hunted American parks. You know, I know that they're full of, you know, immense amounts of trash, bottle tops, ring pulls, all sorts of stuff. So, from my first hand experience, I haven't used a Nexus machine in an American park, but uh, some of my farmland is chronic when it comes to trash. And, and I'm currently writing a blog about it now. Um, I might dig 50, 60 pieces of non-ferrous trash before I find something good. And that's on a certain area of, of the farmland that I've got down in Hampshire. Now, I don't discriminate out anything. I dig it all. Because, and I've, I've written about this as well. Um, I believe that it works in my favour to dig it all because I'm clearing the ground. Because <laughs> um, I've got coils that can go really deep. It makes sense to clear out all of the shallow stuff. So if there is potentially deep targets, you know, being masked by all of the shallow trash, I, I will hit on them at a later date. So for me, I'm not bothered about, you know, obviously VDI numbers or anything like that. Is it non-ferrous and is it ferrous? If it's non-ferrous, I dig it. And if it's ferrous, I leave it, depending on the site. If I'm on a site where I found Roman coins, for instance, I might dig some of the deep iron, but it depends. And then if I've, there's an area that I hunt where I've got dense iron and I've managed to kind of clear out most of the targets, then, you know, I might spend a bit of time when I feel like it digging out the iron in those areas, just in case that's masking targets as well. So, yeah, I, I don't take a shortcut. I pretty much dig everything. Um, in regards to parks in the States, I know that people, like obviously with digital machines, you can notch out certain numbers, you know, and you can kind of create like a coin program or whatever. And then that obviously stops you from digging, you know, pull tabs or, or ring pulls or, or, or bottle tops or whatever. There's a few guys out there that do dig everything in the park like Jeremy, the Pay Street dude, you know, he, he digs everything. And it's no coincidence that he ends up finding so much because, you know, I've said it before, the more trash I dig, the luckier I get. So, you know, it, people that get it and use it in parks in the States, you're just going to have to figure out a way that works for you. Um, I've shown that you can basically phase out the modern ring pulls yeah so the kind of 70s and 80s ones the beaver tail ones they're not on the same discrim they're not in the same position with the discrimination so for instance if you're discriminating out modern pull tabs there's a chance that the beaver tail ones will trick the machine and you have to discriminate higher but again that's your choice if you want to do that for me personally i'd dig it out if it was a park i was going to regularly i'd be digging everything out because in the long term i think it's going to work in your favor um so what i got here i got some bottle caps which i've ground balanced put the vco on And the cool thing is, with the V3 and the Silver Scout coil, where the discrimination dial is, that pretty much knocks out pull tabs as well. So you can kind of get rid of them in one foul swoop. Okay, so what I'm using here is, I think it's copper. I found it on the Thames. It's, um, it's an old half pence. This is a, a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger than um, a six, a silver sixpence. Not massively. There's very little in it actually. Hmm. 
Okay, well that hits it pretty well from two angles. That's definitely alerting you. Okay, three angles, that pr pretty much hits it all the way around. So what I've done here is, I, I, it's the same coin and I've just kind of obscured it. A little bit. Still does a pretty good job. If I remove it, okay. So now let's use a bit of a bigger coin. This is copper as well. Um, let's do what we did before. Just put it in the centre. I think that's going to be um, relatively easy, to be honest. Seems to be doing a pretty good job. Okay. Let's just take it away. So now, let's put a ring pull, not a ring pull, Jesus, a bottle top. Actually, where are we? So that's pretty much the same size radius as one of these. So let's put the coin directly underneath it. Okay, so that is coming through loud and clear. Cool. Let's see oops, if we can still if, see the coin with two. Yeah, it looks like we can. Okay, so that's seeing that thin copper coin under two. What about this one? Three. Okay, um, so let's, let's just kind of sum this up, going back to my original point. If you hunt parks in the States, I would recommend the V3 with either of the silver scout coils. Um, but obviously you've got to understand that if you're discriminating out say you know ring pulls and, and bottle caps you might miss some very small jewelry that's kind of it so yeah it's a trade-off 
but I think that kind of demonstrates quite well. You know, I've shown how it can handle modern pool tabs. Like I said, the 80s ones with the beaver tails, they're, they're kind of slightly different conductivity. So you might have to bump that up. I personally wouldn't, I'd, I'd dig them all out. Um, and it can handle the, uh, the bottle tops as well. Now, as we know, you might get the odd bottle top that is of a slightly different metal material than others and the machine might get fooled on it. But you know, that's what metal detecting is. You gotta suss it out.